Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. Well, Pastor Marco has been doing a current series right now on the Word of God. If there's any topic that's important, it's this one, talking about the Word of God. Tonight I've kind of put a title on this, a subtitle. Pastor Marco has been talking about growth through the Word. Here's a subtitle for tonight. Jot this down. Releasing the power of God's Word. How many by a show of hands believe that God's Word has power? How many believe that? We're going to test it in a few minutes. How many want to test the Word of God? I want to, the Word of God could be tested because it's powerful. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Kind of an opening scripture about the Word of God. Hebrews 4, 12. So again, the title is this, releasing the power of God's Word. Hebrews 4, 12 says it like this in the NOT version. For the Word of God is alive and powerful. Tell somebody next to you, the word is powerful. God wants to release this word upon this planet, in your job, in your family, like never before. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Write this down. There is nothing more alive and powerful than the Word of God. I'm going to say that again. There is nothing more alive and powerful than the Word of God. That's why the enemy wants to take the Word and take prayer out of schools. Because the enemy knows how powerful the Word of God is. I want to show you how powerful it is. Really. I'm going to, we're going to exercise it for me. Exercise. Look at James chapter 5 really quick. Can we exercise the Word for a second? Look at James chapter 5, verse 14. Is it okay if I go down here? The light's okay? Well, I'm going to do it anyway because I got to get down and we got to move. Are any of you sick? Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. James chapter 5, verse 14. I'm going to show you how alive the word of God is. Are any of you sick tonight? How many in this room right now are sick? You have a sickness right now in your body, and you're dealing with a sickness right now. All right? You should call for the elders of the church. I'm one of the elders, one of the pastors, to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. Do we serve a God that heals? Well, that was like seven of us. Amen. How many believe God heals? Amen. How many believe God heals? Amen. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Our God heals. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Is anybody right now in your body, you have pain right now in your body. There's pain right now in your body. Stand up, ma'am, right there. Stand up. Yeah, right here. No, the lady right here. Yeah, go ahead and stand up. Yeah. It's okay. You're dealing with pain right now in your body. The word of God is alive and powerful. Okay. The word just told, told us that get the elders of the church together and Anoint them with oil. I do my best everywhere I go to put oil in my, in, in my pocket like this. I have about five of these bottles. One's in my car, one's in Veronica's car, one's in my bag, and one's in my pocket. Because I want to activate the word everywhere I go. Because the word of God is powerful. You have pain right now in your body, sweetie? We're going to apply this scripture right now. What is your name? I've met you before. What is your name? I'm sorry. Robin, we're going to lay hands on you right now. We're going to believe the pain is going to leave your body. Where's the pain at right now in your body? Okay. I'm one of the pastors. You guys are some of the elders here. I want you to anoint your hands, and I want you to lay hands on Robin. We're going to believe right now the pain is just going to leave her body. Stretch your hands forward. Stretch your hands right now to Robin right now. 
We're just activating. I'm just showing you a little, just activating the, the word of God. The Bible says, get the elders, anybody who's sick, get the elders, get some oil, lay hands on. The oil just represents, a, it's like a, just a physical presence of the Holy Spirit. Just a physical presence of the Holy Spirit. Right now, we command the, the pain right now to leave Robin's body. I come in agreement right now with some of the elders of the church right now for the pain to leave. Pain, we command you to go. Pain, we command you to go. Whatever is causing that pain, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, the, some of the pain right now, all of it is leaving your body. You feel some of the pain leaving your body right now? Give God a big shout of praise. Where is it? In your stomach? Pain's leaving your body? The pain has left their body. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. No, you can do better than that. The pain just left Robin's body. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. He's good. There goes, Robin. God's healing your body right now. God is starting to heal your body, Robin. I don't know what's causing the pain. God is starting to heal your body right now. I want you to drop down just a few things for tonight about the word of God. Let me answer a question for you. How do you release the power of God's word? Number one, write this down. Habit number one, to release the power of God's word. Habit number one is this. Thank you. Give it up for the elders, some of the elders of the church. Good job for praying. <laughs> Habit number one, hear the word. In order to start activating the power of God's word, we have to continue being hearers of God's word. Give yourselves a round of applause because tonight you're hearing the word of God. <laughs> Romans Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by what? And what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is through hearing the word of God that your faith is being built up. How many when you come to church or you go to a power of 12 or you go to a discipleship class, you feel that your faith is being built up? How many faith is being built up right now? My faith just kind of went up the charts because Robin's pain started to leave her body. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. There's a, there's a, a rule that you could write down. It's called the rule of seven. They use this a lot in sales and in marketing. You'll see, of course, commercials. The rule of seven is this. It takes hearing the same thing seven times before you take action. It takes just around seven times of hearing something over and over before someone takes action. I don't know about you. Um, sometimes with me, it takes like 20 times to hear something. Anybody like me? Oh, you guys are more spiritual than me? Okay, that's cool. Sometimes I need it 10 times. I remember when I was a kid, Robert, take out the trash. Trash wasn't taken out. Robert, take out the trash. How many times I got to repeat myself? When we hear the word of God, our faith is being built up. How many want their faith to get strong? How do we get our faith strong? By hearing and hearing the word of God. We must be intentional with designated times that we're hearing the word of God. For example, in a worship service, we hear the word of God. Where else can you hear the word of God? Our church app. How many has downloaded our church app? Man, you could listen to sermons there for like 20 hours. You could listen on radio. How many listen to the word on radio? When I drop off my kids at school, it's word time. I got my dial set. If you want a good, you want a good AM station with the word, write this down. 7.40 AM. 
7.40 a.m. plays Joyce Myers in the morning, um, David Jeremiah in the morning. And when I'm dropping my kids off at school in the morning, I read the word before I go. And then I hop in the car and I want to hear the word of God. Hearing the word of God on Wednesday is good. Hearing the word of God on Sunday is good. But I want to hear the word seven days a week. Why? I want my faith to be built up. Buying a building for $8 million here. Some people thought we were crazy buying this building. Are you guys crazy? How are you going to buy a building for $8 million in San Bernardino? I'll tell you how. Because Jesus told us to buy it. And once Jesus says it, it's done. Look at your neighbor and tell them, once God says it, it's done. Some of us are lacking in faith and lacking the power of God. And God is saying, continue hearing the word of God. So habit number one is what? Let me see if you guys are writing notes. What do you got so far? What's habit number one? Woo, Veronica, they are on it. They got it. Here's habit number two. Read the word. Habit number two to release the power of God's word is read the word. Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night. How many know the enemy, he'll just, he'll try everything he can to give you a bad thought. Won't he? I'll be minding my own business, going to the store, and all of a sudden a song comes on that I used to like back in the days. And all of a sudden I'm just dancing on aisle seven to this secular song. <laughs> How many have ever done that before? Okay, I'm the, I'm the only holy one again. I... Right? It's like your flesh will get turned on in a second if you allow it. See, but reading the word puts the flesh in check. Write that down. Reading the word puts the flesh in check. I want to meditate on your word, God, day and night. Why? Look at the scripture. So that you may be careful to everything in accordance with all that's written in it. I want to meditate on it so I can be careful to do everything what's written in the word. For then you will make your way prosperous. How many want to be successful in everything you do? One of the, words we're, one of the ways we're successful is obeying the word of God, which we'll get into in a minute. This word read in this scripture means, it can be translated this way as well, study. Write that down. The word read in this scripture could also be translated study. The word study means this, the devotion of time. And attention to acquiring knowledge. It's a devoted time set aside for acquiring knowledge. It also means this. A detailed investigation and analysis of a subject or situation. Not only read the word, but study the word. Have different Bibles there if you need to during your study time. Get in concordance, investigate a subject, and don't be so quick just to read a chapter of the Bible. Slow it down a second. Slow it down. I know they got this whole thing, you got to read the Bible in a year. Okay? You don't have to read the whole Bible in a year. If you're doing that, great. But just sit down. Today, what I did, I, I got one scripture this morning, and I just meditated on that one scripture. I read about seven verses. That's it. That's all I read. And to read a whole chapter, this morning I just read Genesis, it was chapter 11. I read a few verses. And it was talking about unity. And I just stayed there and meditated on it. And I said, Lord, it's talking about unity. Keep me unified, God, with the body. Keep me unified with my wife. Keep me unified with the leadership of the church. Keep me unified to your word. And I just stayed there for like a half an hour just meditating on a few scriptures. When we study the word of God, just slow it down a little bit. 
Here's a, here's a stat according to churchgoers. Stats show that only 27 to 30% of churchgoers read their Bible throughout the week. Show, stats show only 27 to 30% of churchgoers, they read their Bible throughout the week. That's about three out of ten people read their Bible throughout the week. But there's no wonder we're lacking power in our life. There's no wonder we're lacking power in our family. There's no wonder we're lacking some God results, some God thinking. How many want to think like God? See, when we read the word and study the word, I begin, you begin to think like God. I want to show you this video. I think it's like a two-minute video. They did a study. You guys have the video? We good? You guys got it? it oh, it's probably back, maybe back here. You guys got it? I think they got it. I'm going to go out on faith. They got it. Here's a, here's a video. They did a study when somebody reads the Bible once a week. It has a little change. But there's something that happens when somebody reads the Bible at least four times a week. The results are off the chart. Take a look at this video when we read the Bible. Look what it does. There was a recent study by the Center for Bible Engagement where they pulled 40,000 uh, p- uh, general population in the U.S. from 8 to 80. And they just wanted to see how we are engaging with Scripture. Right. And they discovered something that actually became kind of the profound discovery of the entire study. It, they weren't even looking for this, and this is kind of became the highlight of the study. Right. Um, when we're in the scripture one time a week, and that could be church on Sunday, that's pastor saying you open your Bible, we hear the message, one time a week had negligible effect on some key areas of your life. So I'll, I'm gonna spell that out more here in a moment. Two times a week, negligible effect. Now at three times a week, there was a blip on the map, like there was a heartbeat. Something happened, again, a heartbeat. Okay. But here was the profound discovery. When we're in the scripture four times a week, it literally spikes off the chart. You would expect that it'd be one, two, th- I mean, there'd be a gradual incline right. on the effect and impact that would have in your life, but it was literally one, two, three, four, something radically happens. Okay, you got my curiosity. To this what, extent. What kind of behavior is being affected? Feeling lonely drops 30%. Wow. Ang- four times a week in the four Bible. Four times a week in the Bible. Okay. Anger issues drop 32%. Uh, bitterness in relationships, marriage, a relationship with your kids, and so on, drops 40%. Alcoholism drops 57%. Crazy. Feeling spiritually stagnant. You know, if there was one area when I'm talking with people that, that they'll be honest about is they just feel spiritually stagnant. Ask them the question, how much time are you spending in Scripture? If they're in the Scripture four times a week or more, it drops 60%. Wow. Viewing pornography drops 61%. That's very important. Now, on a flip positive side, sharing your faith jumps 200%. Wow. Because you have a confidence in God's Word. And then discipling others jumps 230%. That's, That's amazing right there. Wow. Look at the person next to you, tell them, you got to read the word. No wonder why we're not evangelizing enough. We're not reading the scriptures. Habit number three. What was habit number one? What was habit number two? We got it. Habit number three, live the word. Hearing it is great, got to do it. Studying it, we got to do it. But number three now, we're starting to drive it home. Now we're going to live the word of God. If we want to see the power of God in our lives, we have to live the word of God. Joshua 1, 8 again, meditate on it day and night. Study the book, meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Meditate on it so we can obey everything in the word of God. When the word of God is practiced and obeyed, you will have success in all you do. Man, that's good news. I'm going to say that again. When the word of God is practiced and obeyed, you will have success in all you do. How many want success in all you do? When we live out the word, we get God's results in our lives. 
I'm not interested in Robert's results. I want God's results in my life. How do I get God's results? I have to live out the word of God. See, the only difference between a struggling Christian and a victorious Christian is this. The victorious Christian is living and obeying the word of God. Maybe you're struggling in an area and God is saying, let's make some adjustments. I don't know about you. Have you ever been in a service where I, I'm speaking or Pastor Marco's speaking and there seems like there's a big spotlight just on you? And you're like, oh my gosh, did someone tell Pastor Marco my business? How many have ever done that before? It's like, what's going on? It's not Pastor Marco. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through him directly, yes, to you. That's what the word of God does. As we're hearing, as we're listening now, the next step is to take action. The Bible says fornication is a sin. What is fornication? Having sex outside of marriage. The Bible calls it a sin and it will lead into destruction. You're saying, Pastor, well, I, don't want, I, I can't do that. I, I don't, I, I, no, I, I, I don't want to do that. I'll obey this and I'll obey that, but I don't know about that one. We can't pick and choose what we want to obey. If the word of God says it, we do it. Why? I want God's results. I want to, I want to pass it down to my kids. I want my daughter to be on fire for God. I want my son to be on fire for God. But they're not looking at what, I, what I'm saying. They're looking what I do. Look at your neighbor and tell them, obey the word. Tell your neighbor, you got to let some stuff go tonight. Because the Bible is like a mirror. The Bible is like a mirror. We should see ourselves a reflection of who we are and notice there's something off. Then we make the adjustments. And God is saying, I've put the Holy Spirit inside of you to live out the word. But sometimes we're lacking the word in our lives. And God is saying, things are going to change tonight. You're going to start living out the word. How many want to start living out the word? And we're going, to break, we're going to break some stuff off tonight. If you have an addiction, you're leaving this campus set free in Jesus' name. If you're addicted to cigarettes or alcohol, man, I got good news. You're about to be set free in a couple of minutes. Woo, God is good. Why? His word is alive and powerful. Habit number four. What was habit number one? What was habit number two? What was habit number two? I tricked you. What was habit number three? I'm having you say it at least seven times. It's going to get in your spirit. Habit number four. Oh, you guys already know what it is? Oh, you guys are cheating. It's behind me. I heard a bunch of people just shout it out. Number four habit. Speak the word. God is re he's ready to release his power. He's ready to release his power. All we got to do is speak God's word. The most powerful words we can speak is God's word. Write that down. The most powerful words we can speak is God's word. I would declare and speak God's word over my situation. Psalms 192 says it this way. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I will trust in him. You're dealing with a sickness. Psalms 41.3, the Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. You need a financial breakthrough. Deuteronomy 8.18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. How many in this auditorium right now, you're going through a situation and you have a scripture right now that you're standing on? I want one person to share that. You have a scripture you're standing on? You have one? No? Yeah? How many know a scripture right now that you're standing on? See, I like to get the crowd involved. I'm really a teacher at heart. 
Benjamin, stand up, stand up, stand up. You're cool, man. Thank you. Give me, give me some, give me a high five. Give me some dap right there. All right. So right now you're going through a situation and you're attaching a word to that situation. What word are you standing on right now? Psalms 91 2. What, is, what does that scripture say? So I read from the beginning it says, Those who um, refuge themselves under the wings and the mighty hand of God are protected by Him. Is that God's word? Yeah, I'm going through it, but yeah. I, like, this is just hitting me too because that's true. That's the way that I maintain myself. And uh, my sisters here are witnesses to what I'm going through. But every time I read that, I proclaim that over myself. And it's like a victory. And you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? Your situation is going to turn around. Give me one more and we're done. Give me one more. You're going through something right now. Diamond, get Diamond over here. Diamond, what scripture are you standing on? You don't have to get in detail what you're going through. What scripture are you standing on? I oh, know I'm going through a lot. Oh, you want? Yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. I don't mind it. Yeah, I actually, I, so I went to the hospital on Tuesday, last Tuesday. I thought I was having a heart attack. Okay. Um, but I found out it's my body itself, so my body's in a lot of pain. But the scripture that God kept bringing to remembrance was a scripture that I put away years ago. I kind of pushed it off, and it was Psalms 144, verse 1. Wow, what does that scripture says, uh, say? Glory be the Lord, my rock, who builds my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Ooh. Don't speak your circumstance. Speak the word. Speak the word. And watch the power of God. He wants us at your workplace. Speak the word at the workplace. Watch what happens. You got a crazy boss. Anybody got a crazy boss? Get there super early and just pray for your boss and the company. And speak word over that company and watch what happens. So habit number one, what is it? Habit number one. Habit number two. Habit number three. Habit number four. God's, it's done. They already got it, Mondo. Let's all stand up, you guys. How many received the word of God today? Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.